No, Mr. Dennis, no, you do it. You, why don't you do it? I don't... Why don't you take the light, please? I don't like cameras. Is this thing in... Holy shit. Is we... Miss Patricia, are we already on? I didn't even fix my hair. This movie better be good, that's all I can say. We've been waiting 19 years for this shit. Etc. So Glass tells the story of David Dunn, the Horde, and Mr. Glass as they are all put together face to face for the first time in a mental ward while a psychiatrist tries to convince all three of them that their abilities are delusions. Well, we're here everybody. Leading up to Glass, I reviewed Unbreakable. I revisited my review to Split and now we are here. This is a sequel that I have been waiting for since the year 2000. Split was a great follow-up, but bringing back David Dunn and bringing back Mr. Glass is something that I've been waiting for since the credits rolled in Unbreakable. And for the longest time, with the downfall of the career of M. Night Shyamalan, I thought we were never going to get it. But we've got it! The day is here! Now let's talk about this shit! Now before I say anything regarding Glass, let me go ahead and assure all of you, I will keep this video 100% spoiler free because I am going to be doing a standalone spoiler review. This is the type of movie that merits an entire video to discuss spoilers and discuss the things that you normally wouldn't want to discuss in a regular review. So I'm going to stay as vague and as non-specific as possible so that you guys can enjoy Glass and not walk in feeling like you already know what to expect around every corner. So. Rest assured, no spoilers here. So it goes without saying, there's a lot riding on this movie Glass. First of all, just the fandom alone. The fans that have gathered to finally see this concluding chapter to this Unbreakable trilogy. The fans that have been with this trilogy since the beginning, as well as the fans that have gained an appreciation for Unbreakable over the years. Fans that were gained when they saw Split and saw that little teaser at the end and said, what the fuck is Bruce Willis doing in this movie? Everybody coming together to see how M. Night Shyamalan is going to wrap all this up. And just for M. Night Shyamalan himself, he had the visit which most people liked, he had the split with pretty much everybody liked, and brought in all the excitement for people that loved his early work, and now this is the one that is kind of almost his career riding on the shoulders of glass. Is M. Night back? Is he back in the saddle again? All of that riding on whether or not we as audience members like glass. And let's call a spade a spade. There's a little bit of Bruce Willis come back in there too. You know, he hasn't done the greatest movies in quite a long time. This is probably the biggest thing that he's done since Looper. I love Death Wish, but most people don't. So there's a little bit of comeback story in that too. Is Bruce Willis back on top? So getting right into the positives of Glass right away, I just love seeing these characters again. I love seeing David Dunn and Mr. Glass come back the first time that we've seen them in almost 19 years. I love seeing the Horde come back, even though we just saw Split two years ago. The fact that that character is just so fascinating and it's such a blast to watch James McAvoy bring all 23, 24 personalities to life. Bringing that back as well is awesome, and seeing these three characters interact with each other and seeing how this plays out in this confined setting of this mental ward is just what got my ass in the seat. Aside from the fact that I'm just an unbreakable fanatic and I want to see how it concludes, the fact that I get to see these characters back again is probably the biggest drive for me. What do you want? I am here to see if tales of the extraordinary being are true. May I meet the beast? I'm Mary Reynolds. I need your abilities to get us all out of here and show the world we exist. And I really enjoy the story. I like the direction that M. Night Shyamalan took for this third film. You know, this is a guy that always likes to subvert expectations, do the unexpected, go in directions that you wouldn't think or maybe even don't even want him to go into. And I like the fact that he takes this chapter, which with any other franchise would end up being this huge, epic scale, big budget CGI action fest, epic conclusion to this massive superhero trilogy. And you get M. Night Shyamalan and he says, nope, we're going to do a quiet, confined movie in a mental ward. That's your concluding chapter. And it plays out pretty well. I like the direction that he takes it. I like the fact that it kind of keeps a lot of the tones from both Unbreakable and Split, probably more so Split into this third chapter, kind of brings all that together. Still going after some of the themes that he went after in Unbreakable, like finding your place in the universe, finding your you know purpose in life, some of the things that he went for in Split, the strength of the broken over the strength of the unbroken, everything like that. 
to a much smaller scale because we've already kind of explored those themes very heavily in those first two films. They just kind of trickle over and carry over into this. But the fact that it stays consistent as a third chapter in this trilogy and keeps all the themes, the storyline, the characters, the tone, everything like that into this third movie makes it feel like it really has its place amongst Unbreakable and Split. Now, this is something you're probably not going to hear too many people say in regards to Glass, but I actually really liked the pacing that M. Night Shyamalan chose for this third chapter. To me, it felt totally consistent with the previous two films, which in and of themselves are slow burns and are very patient films. Glass is exactly the same way, a very patient film. This is not a huge action-packed spectacle, although there are quite a few action sequences in this, so you're going to get that you're going to get a lot of the uh, pay, payoff for certain confrontations with these characters that this trilogy does promise you for this third movie. But it's a film that takes its time. It's a film that is constantly building towards something. And even its slowest segments, it always feels like it's ratcheting up to something. It never feels boring. It never feels like we're meandering. It never feels like it's going off on rabbit trails. It always feels like it's building up to something. And that's what this film should do. Now let's talk performances here. James McAvoy... Holy shit. I mean, the dude was fucking incredible in Split. He might be even better in this. You get to see a lot more of his personalities in this, and you get to see the fan favorites come back, like Hedwig, like Dennis, like Patricia from the original movie Split. But James McAvoy, for as great as some of the performances I'm about to talk about are, he fucking just steamrolls everybody in this movie. Like, James McAvoy is the star of Glass. Every single time that he is on screen, he is just captivating. He is the one that you are here to see and every time he's off screen, even when you're with awesome characters, you're like, bring back the horde because that is just awesome. My name is Patricia. I have no question. There are two dozen identities. I'm Mary Reynolds. Por favor, senora. We almost got you, bro. That live in that body with you. The beast is coming any minute now for you guys. But what I am questioning is your belief that you are something more than human. <laughs> And yet, it is true. Just like in Split, just seeing how effortlessly this guy just transitions from personality to personality to personality within the same frame is impressive as all hell. All these personalities have their own dialect, their own tone, their own mannerisms, their own kind of... They feel like totally different people. It feels like he's literally playing 23 different characters like Nutty Professor, but they're all one person just switching personalities. That shit is just unfucking real my boy Bruce Willis. Probably not saying a whole lot, but this is the best performance that he's given since Looper. Uh, I think that he does kind of tap back into that David Dunn performance that he gave, which is a very quiet, subdued, kind of monotone, stoic performance, but it feels consistent with the character that he portrays him like that again. He has some really good action sequences. He does feel like he has some emotions going on regarding his you know, family regarding what is going on with the Horde and what is going on with Mr. Glass and what he is ultimately trying to kind of rise to the occasion to do throughout this movie, continuing those themes of, you know, finding your place in the universe. All that stuff is great and all of it, again, just brought to life by Bruce Willis and his very good performance in this. Keep it up, Bruce. Bring us back some good shit. A Die Hard 6, maybe. That ain't fucking good day to die hard. David Dunn. The only person to survive that train wreck all those years ago? What do you do? I'm in security. You think you have superpowers? It's a feeling. Vision. I have to touch them. You believe you are a protector. Samuel L. Jackson. The guy is awesome as Mr. Glass. He feels 100% like he did not miss a beat from the year 2000. As soon as this guy opens his mouth and starts speaking again, that is not Samuel L. Jackson anymore. That is Elijah Price. That is Mr. Glass. The guy is intimidating. The guy is captivating. He still has that little bit of kind of twisted charm to him where even though he's evil as fuck, you still like him. You still sympathize with him to a degree. And you're kind of behind his cause even though he has to cause evil to do it. His ultimate goal, you're like, yeah, get there. I hope you win. Elijah has changed over the years. He's given up. We keep him heavily sedated. But there is a reason for that. He's too smart for them. You won't be lonely anymore. You have two new friends.
And then we have the introduction of Sarah Paulson's character, and I really liked her addition. I liked her as an actress, and I like her as this character. She's basically just a psychiatrist who is in charge of trying to convince these three characters that they're not actually superhuman. Trying to convince them that they're all delusions, that they are regular people, and they've convinced themselves that they have these abilities. And it's a very interesting story direction, and she's very, very convincing with the things that she brings. As you're a fan of the franchise, you look back at certain things that she brings up and says, well, what if it's just actually this and gives you this realistic approach to the situation, this, you know, rational explanation for some of the irrational things that we have seen in the past two movies. And it's captivating to the point where you're like, you know what? She's kind of got a point. Is that the twist? That this is all bullshit? What the fuck? The three of you think you have extraordinary gifts like something out of a comic book. <laughs> I've developed an effective treatment for this disorder. And I really like some of the side characters they had in this, some returning characters of both Unbreakable and Split. Now, I'm not going to spoil who is in it. Some of them are in the trailer. Some of them might be a little bit of a surprise. So all I'm going to say is the characters that return from the previous two films are mostly utilized very well, and the performances that these three characters give are very good and consistent with the previous films. So I think they were utilized well in the story. They were very necessary in this story and in this film. They don't feel like they're just thrown in for a familiar face for a cameo like, hey, remember that actor from 2000? None of that. They actually feel like a great continuation of that story 19 years later and even two years later from Split. So the utilization of the side characters in this, bravo. And now the question that is on everybody's mind that has everybody's ears burning, what do I think about Glass as a concluding chapter of this trilogy? Does it satisfy? Does it give us everything that we have wanted, everything that we have asked for for the past 19 years? Does it wrap everything up in a satisfying way? This is what I'm going to say. I really enjoyed how this movie wrapped up, but I feel like I'm definitely going to be in the minority on that. This is a movie that I feel like the last 15 minutes or so is what's going to divide everybody that goes and sees it. We're going to be divided into two camps when you leave Glass. You're going to be somebody that really likes the bold directions and the bold choices that they made with the finale of this film. And you're going to have the people that walk away saying, why the fuck would you do that? You had 19 years and that's the best you could come up with. I have seen equally passionate answers on both sides. I actually even did a poll on Killer Flicks and on Twitter asking, what is your thoughts on the ending of Glass? Did you love it? Are you still kind of processing it? Or did you hate it? So for Twitter, just one day after Glass is released, 72 votes, 18% loved it, 57% are still on the fence, and 25% hated it. Now go to Killer Flicks. We've got 18 votes. Eight of them are still trying to figure out whether they like it or not, so they're on the fence. Eight of them loved it, and two of them thought it was garbage. So you got eight people that loved it, and 10 that are either not sure or just don't like it at all. That's basically right down the middle, guys. I mean, this is a movie that, for me, I'm not going to get into specifics with the ending. I will just say that the directions and the bold choices that M. Night Shyamalan decides to go into to wrap up this story are both ballsy, unexpected, and to me, consistent with what he has already done in these previous two movies. It might not be the ending that you wanted. It might not be the ending that you envisioned. It might not be the ending that you had built up in your head for 19 years. And I feel like ex expectations is going to be the thing that kills this because it's been a 19 year wait. But it feels consistent to me that he would go in some of these unexpected, bold directions because that's been this franchise from the beginning. Barely anybody liked Unbreakable when it was first released. The cinema score was like a C. It didn't have that much of a box office draw. It didn't have that much of a following. It was over years that people started to revisit and really start to appreciate some of those bold directions and those kind of grounded takes that M. Night Shyamalan went with in that first film. Split. You guys saw my revisited review of Split. And if you haven't, you should have. I didn't think all that much about the movie when I first saw it. I think I gave it a see it on Netflix. I was very lukewarm on it, but I was excited by what that ending meant for the future. Revisiting the movie twice since then, now, it's a few steps below Unbreakable, but it's like a four and a half out of five movie for me. I really, really enjoy Split upon rewatches and upon giving time to kind of appreciate some of the things that M. Night Shyamalan did. And I have hope that a lot of these people that are really upset with what happened in the conclusion of this film over time will maybe start to appreciate it more and start to understand a little bit more or even just kind of maybe 
after letting their expectations simmer down and revisit it, it's not as jarring of an ending as it seems to be for a lot of people. There's some that are going to see the ending and just hate it for all time, and that's fine. This is not an ending that really I could defend a whole lot because there are some very against the grain choices that I walk out of saying this is going to really piss some people off. But for me personally, just to kind of defend why I like the ending, it felt consistent with the trilogy. It felt like it was earned to me. There's things that are introduced that felt like they make sense within the lore of this franchise. There is kind of some tonal decisions as far as how grounded and how realistic they want to go with this premise that to me felt consistent. And the overall message that they go for with why they went that direction into the final frame of the movie to me feels like a successful and a very satisfying conclusion to the story that we have been following since Unbreakable. And I also have to say, I like it because it is so against the grain. You know, we are in a world now where we weren't in this world in 2000 when Unbreakable came out where comic book movies are like every other fucking weekend. We get Marvel and DC and Fox movies like this. It's like every time you turn around, there's more announced, there's more trailers, there's more being released. And I love all of them for the most part. And I love the fact that we are in that culture now. It's awesome. It's a great time to be a movie fan. But when you have these, you know, comic book films that for the most part are very templated, they do have a formula. For the most part, they do go in very predictable directions. They do have resolutions that you could probably guess walking into the theater. And it's because of that that I really appreciate the direction that M. Night Shyamalan went with his conclusion of his trilogy because it feels like it goes against a lot of the expectations that we have from being saturated in this comic book environment. And even just getting out of the Unbreakable trilogy, this is something that is not new for M. Night Shyamalan. This is a guy that has never really pandered to his fan base. There's a wink for you, Unky Sean. He's never really pandered to the fan base. He's never really pandered to expectations. This is a guy that has always went the direction that he has wanted to go. Kind of downfalled his career for a little while because of that, but when he is on top, when he is actually making a film that is good, whenever he is firing on all cylinders, I appreciate some of those bold directions that M. Night Shyamalan goes into subverting my expectations because it doesn't happen very often, and to me, it was successful. I walked out satisfied. It has begun, David. I've found someone who will require your full potential. You shouldn't be hiding in the shadows. You might want to try and stop us. A lot of people are going to die. Now getting into the negatives. Despite the fact of everything that I just went on that long tirade about regarding the ending in the last 15 minutes of this movie, there are some aspects to the conclusion that feel a little bit sloppily handled. Again, I'm not going to get into specifics. I'll just say the fate of one character in particular felt very unceremonious and it felt like it was kind of an afterthought and it kind of felt like it was not really fully developed, almost like they shot it and they never revisited it, never tried to get a second take. They're just like, ah, good enough, and they moved on. And it does feel a little bit jarring and awkward how that plays out. Beyond that, there is... Man, it's a bitch to not give spoilers. There's a pretty big logic issue that I have with a direction they took in the third act regarding this introduction of something that we are supposed to catch on to very quickly and buy into very quickly and then not too long after that there's something that happens that completely contradicts everything that they just tried to get us to buy into i'm not telling you anything that probably makes any sense if you haven't seen the movie so this is my plug for my spoiler review be sure to hang out and check out that one probably tomorrow and i will tell you exactly what that logic issue is but walking out of the theater despite the fact that i do like this ending and i will defend it upon a debate that's something that little logic issue that i cannot make any sense of whatsoever it feels like sloppy writing now moving on from the conclusion one other negative that i did have with glass especially with how much i love the score in unbreakable is that we don't get that score in this i felt like that was something that was like a no-brainer to bring back that great unbreakable score for segments of this the score in this feels much more consistent with Split, which was a decent score, but it pales in comparison to what we got in Unbreakable. So the score for this movie was a bit of a letdown for me when you have something that was just so incredible back in 2000 that 
it really felt like there was so many opportunities you could have thrown in pieces of that score for us Unbreakable Fanatics to just kind of warm our hearts that we got to hear it again. Missed opportunity, M. Night. What the fuck? And my final negative with this film, again, I'm not going to get into specifics, but like I said earlier, there are some characters that return from the previous two movies that are utilized mostly well. There's one in particular that I did not buy into the direction they took that character at all. It didn't feel natural as a progression of the story from the previous films that this character was in. It didn't feel like it really was earned as a character arc. And it just felt like it was a plot convenience, which kind of goes back to a little bit of sloppy writing. And it's a very important, pivotal role in the film that I just never got into. I was like, this just doesn't, I don't buy into this. It doesn't quite make sense. It feels forced. But overall, guys, despite this being an extremely difficult film to talk about the way that I want to talk about it without giving spoilers, overall, I am very satisfied with Glass as a concluding uh, chapter of this trilogy. It doesn't necessarily give me everything that I thought that I wanted, but what I did get to me after sitting on it for a day is a very satisfying conclusion. I love seeing these characters back. I feel like this is just another upswing direction for M. Night Shyamalan. Most people already disagree. This is 37% of Rotten Tomatoes, for Christ's sake. But I really enjoyed it. I feel like it is a earned conclusion. I feel like it makes sense within the franchise, and I feel like it really makes this trilogy stand out amongst the comic book genre as something to be held as very special. And this probably will go on to be one of my favorite trilogies of all time. Just temper your expectations a little bit because a lot of people are going in with extreme hype, 19 years of waiting, I get it, but try to temper your expectations. Walk in knowing that this conclusion might not be the conclusion that you wanted or that you thought you wanted. And I think you will enjoy this movie much more for that. I was warned that the ending was gonna be polarizing and walking in with that expectation, I feel like made me have a better experience. What have you done, Elijah? So if you're a fan of Unbreakable or Split and you wanna see how these characters' story concludes in this final chapter, absolutely check this film out in theaters and whenever it hits the shelves complete your collection of this m night unbreakable trilogy and go out and buy it so what did you guys think of glass as a concluding chapter to this unbreakable trilogy are you a part of camp a that really appreciates the bold unique directions that it goes into or are you a part of camp b that's already lighting the torches and getting your pitchforks and running over to m night Shyamalan's house as we speak Tell me what your thoughts are on Glass down in the comment sections below. Please keep them spoiler free. We will discuss spoilers in the next video. Do not be a dick that ruins it for somebody in the comment section. Please don't be that person. Please like and share this video. Hit that subscribe button if you're not already a subscriber. If you guys want to check out some social media links, you can check out Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Spreadshirt for Cody Leach merchandise like t-shirts and other merchandise, and my Patreon page, which is a great way to give back to this channel, help this channel grow, and get cool exclusive content for your eyes only if you decide to become a patron. So if you guys will check all that out, and if you want to check out some more of my videos, including my review of Unbreakable and both of my reviews for Split to see how two years changes your perspective, check all that shit out by clicking right over here.